This week's podcast episode features Howard Tolman, General Managing Partner at G2T3V, recorded on the floor of the 2023 Money Show Traders Expo Orlando. I hope you enjoy it. Howard, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm enjoying the show. And this morning's part has been fabulous. Excellent. Well, I'm really glad you were able to be here. Um, some of the perspective you've given on the technology space, I think, is extremely valuable. So for anybody who's not here, who wasn't able to see you live, what were some of the major points that you touched on? And when you look at the emerging tech sector right now, what kind of technologies excite you? Change is inevitable, and we're just going to be overwhelmed. So the only constant, the only thing you're going to be able to count on in the future is change. Anticipate it and act on it or we're going to get run over by it. And it's funny because I said that, you know, you pay for it one way or the other. It's like, they're going to get you, you know. So number one is to be ready and open to change. And change is not hard. What's hard is giving up stuff that worked for you in the past. And people are very reluctant, you know. But uh, I think right now is, uh, is a real watershed moment for a lot of investors. And you want to be positioned for whatever happens in November in terms of the 2024. And a lot of the folks here were talking about that being very consequential. I think you have to position yourself uh, in order to roll with it whatever happens. And the one place I think is safest is certainly technology. So that was number one. Number two was this idea that you can test every single business idea by the same criteria. Is it going to save me time? Is it going to save me money? Is it going to make me more productive? Will it help me make better decisions? Is it going to keep me healthy? And that's how we test every new business plan that we see. That's how we evaluate. And I think that that's a perspective that investors need to bring to the story. And then the third was really, what are the trends? What's coming down the pipe that we have to be aware of? And one was, that today our time is more valuable than our money, amazingly, to the right now economy. It's astonishing how everybody wants it and they want it yesterday. And as we see this continuing to accelerate, the important thing is you can't take your customers for granted because they're looking around. And I know when a doctor or when a, a vendor says to me, I'll have it in a week, and I say, my God, I can pick up my phone and Amazon will have it this afternoon. It doesn't matter that they don't regard themselves as a direct competitor. They're competing with a mindset that says the sense of immediacy is really what we're talking about. So there's that. And then I think the other couple of things that are important, certainly healthcare is going to be off the charts. Certainly the attention economy is the new currency. Whether we pay attention to something is all that matters. If you're lost in the noise, it's over for you. And, and the people that are able to penetrate that and get their message through are going to be the people that succeed. And it's got to be a pretty simple message, too. It's got to be pretty clear. So those were the basic ideas. And, and the last thing is, you know, uh, we heard about the fantastic, the magnificent seven over and over again. I'm about halfway there. I think that there are uh, three or four that are strong and are going to be there forever. And then I think there are a couple, and I pointed out Google and Facebook, basically, that live off of invading our privacy. And the government is waking up, parents are waking up, uh, and I think that we're going to see some serious pressure in terms of those companies, because if your advertising model is your whole game, then you're very exposed to this. You know, I look at these other companies, and with AI, which everybody's going to be using, but AI drives and improves Amazon's business, Microsoft's business, even Apple's business to a certain extent. But AI is a boogeyman to begin with. And then when you get Facebook and you get Google and they're already deemed to be trying to take over the world, uh, this is a real risk in a political year especially. I remember you kind of talked about sort of like that T thing where you have you know, Facebook and, and Google over on this side and then what, Microsoft, Apple, yeah, Amazon. Microsoft, Amazon, and Apple. Yeah. Basically, we willingly part with our personal information because it improves the quality of the relationship. On the other side, 
they take our information, they sell it, and worse than that, they're killing our kids. You know, so. Well, let's talk about a few of these topics that are on people's minds. I mean, you, you touched on AI, obviously. And I think of the concept of compression and how it, what AI does that. Can you talk about that concept a little bit? Yeah, I think, you know, we talk about how AI, how robotics, and how basically technology are going to eliminate jobs. What I'm encouraged by, and when we talk about compression, what I'm encouraged by is if you apply it correctly, if you compress the crappy jobs, if you get rid of mundane, repetitive, you know, ministerial jobs, in theory, you free us up to better use the workforce, to use the higher level capability of our workers and have the robots do the grunt work. And by the way, they'll do it cheaper, they'll do it faster, they'll do it better, and they don't get sick. So all of that is going to free up time, and I think if we use it well, it's going to improve our lives. What was that stat? I think was Amazon said they wouldn't be able to hire. By the uh, end of 2024, Amazon will have run out of hires. They won't, there won't be enough people to meet their needs. And now, keep in mind that that doesn't necessarily take into account a wave that's going to eliminate five million cashiers or that's going to eliminate, uh, in my fields, insurance adjusters are going away. People are using their phones. They can do and send the information. You don't need to wait three days for a guy to drive across the state or across town. So we're seeing uh, job categories that are going to go away. And we're going to see job categories, for example, in AI that are going to be newly created. Uh, you know, one, I call it is a prompt engineer, and a prompt engineer is somebody who's gonna be smarter and smarter and smarter, because it's an iterative activity, at defining the prompts that you then submit to the chat systems to get a better answer. Because right now, if you went to Google and you used their current system, you get this sort of vanilla, you know, bland answer, and you're like, well, where's the list? Where's the meat? So, Prompt engineers are going to help improve that level of response, and, and frankly, that's going to be a whole new job category. One of the other interesting talk technologies you talked about was on healthcare. I mean, Apple was the concept of the other 363, right? Yeah, so the idea that healthcare needs to be proactive and preventative instead of reactive is something that you would have thought by now we would have figured out, okay? But the truth is that our entire healthcare system is based on showing up at the hospital. And the hospitals can't cope with it, they can't, they don't have the people for it, and all of that. Apple is saying, and by the way, it was two or three now out of five adults are using a healthcare application, whether it's just to keep track of their steps, whether it's measuring their heart rates or different exercise levels. But we're all gonna be wired, we're all gonna be connected, and frankly, that's going to permit us to be healthier and more aware of conditions. You know, uh, I think it's Elijah Wan who, or Al Cinder, Lou Al Cinder, who's ever doing this TV ad now about AFib. But basically, AFib is something that can be regularly detected now uh, by your watch. And if people start to pay attention, they're going to get in there before it becomes a crisis. And that's the whole game. I mean, you know, you want to be in the hospital or you want to see your doctor not in the emergency room. Absolutely, absolutely. And it was funny, when you were talking about the uh, also that instantaneous translation technology, I mean, I grew up watching Star Trek and the, the concept of the universal translator, and now it's going to be something we can actually do with our phones? For sure, for sure. We're going to be able to regularly talk to anyone in the world. Uh, and by the way, this is a very interesting for customer service because you're starting to see ads from companies saying sort of a reversal saying, and our customer support is in the US. Very chauvinistic, very, like I'm not gonna send you to somebody who you can't understand their talking and stuff. Well, guess what? Pretty soon the voices, the inclinations, the regionality, all of that'll be sorted out. So when somebody calls me from Kansas, it'll sound like their next door neighbor. And that's where we're headed, whether it's from India or from anywhere in the world. So that's a great leveler. Uh, it's good and bad, but I mean, the, the instant translation is going to permit us to do innovation at a scale that's never been done before. Well, in the time we have left, let me pivot a little bit to, towards investment versus the tech te technology. I mean, you've been a private tech investor for many, many years. What lessons do you think would apply to those who are investing in the public markets that you've learned and, and apply in your private world? Well, look, I think, I think that the, 
The biggest lesson, and unfortunately COVID extended this by about three years, but the biggest lesson is to starve your losers early, which means take your, take your beating, because, and especially in investing in a venture world, take your beating early, feed your winners, and be patient. And, and we're right now in a point, I think uh, was said on the last panel very persuasively, the stocks that you're in, don't get scared out of them by five or 10% moves. You're in them for good reasons. Their fundamentals have not changed by and large. Uh, and that's what I have been, I mean, I've been in companies on average 10 years now. Spot Hero is a good example. You know, look, when the world ended and nobody was driving their cars, they weren't parking. Spot Hero went to zero in terms of revenue. It, this year it'll do two billion parking spaces. It's exploded, right? So, so companies that were fundamentally distorted are coming back, but you had to, you had to hang in there. I guess one last question. I mean, obviously your responsibility is to sort of try and figure out where technology is going next. You, when you sit back and look at, at the, the technology industry and the sector in general, optimistic, pessimistic, are there things that worry you and concern you in addition to sort of motivate you? You know, I think that it's outrun our ability to regulate it already. I think that regulation in this country lags innovation by five or ten years. And I think what's going on in Congress and in the regulatory agencies, on the one hand, is like overreacting. So you have the FTC doing some things that I think are just outreach and way beyond the norm. And then, by and large, you have the rest of these agencies that are so, so far behind the curve uh, that it's embarrassing. So, so my feeling is... Technology is inescapable. Well used, it's going to be very beneficial. I think, for example, AI is going to improve radiology. You know, we're not going to miss things because we're not going to be the guy who wasn't paying rapt attention that day. The machine won't miss any of these things. But I think that also it's going to be abused in a lot of ways. And I'm, I'm particularly concerned. I mean, my grandkids are teens, late teens, but teens. Uh, and I think they're the last generation, they're the last group that may have avoided having their entire lives not only be online, but be extremely online. And it is scary. It is scary. Well, Howard, really, I do appreciate your time here at The Money Good. Show. It was great hearing you from you. I know the audience enjoyed it as well. So Good. Thank you. Home. Nice Thank to you so talk much. to you. Thank you all for watching.